Okay, welcome to our last set of lessons in Calculus BC. Our objective today is to find the area of a region bounded by a polar graph. And so we can do our happy dance because once we finish today, we will have completed Calculus 1 and 2, which is quite an accomplishment. So give yourself a pat on the back while you do your happy dance. Okay, in this unit, the most important thing is to know this formula. What a is equal to 1 half the integral from a to b of r squared d theta. Now, this is a fairly easy um, formula. The most difficult thing about this formula is to find your radial lines. So here's some um, just tips to help you find the radial line. The first thing is it's very important to sketch the region. Now, most often this will be a calculator active question, but um, on the AP exam, but it could be a, a calculator inactive on the multiple choice. So you need to be able to sketch those radial lines. And in your packet, I've given you some helps in doing that. You know, I've kind of told you what each function looks like. Then you're going to draw what we call the radial lines. Um, and the radial, the radial lines is what we take the um, integration from. That's how we get our, our A to B. So what we have to do is ask ourselves, over what interval of values must theta vary in order to sweep that, the region that we're looking for? And then your answer in step three will determine your bounds, your boundaries. So the best way to do it is just to do it. So we have here, we're finding the area of one petal. And the formula is r is equal to 2 cosine 3 theta. Now, a couple of things that we know. I've, I've sketched it for you here, uh, just because my sketching skills are atrocious. But um, what I want you to know is that because it's cosine theta, then we know it's symmetrical to the x-axis. Because n is equal to 3, the number of petals will be, it's odd, so the number of petals is exactly what's listed. So we have three petals. So my first, there's two different ways of doing this. I only want to find one petal. So one of the things I can do, um, I don't, I'm not a very, as I've said before, I don't do a good job in memorizing things, but um, so I can tell you that the area of this is, uh, the, the domain of this is pi, but that's something that I have to remember. So on a good day, I may or may not remember that, but what I can do is set this equation equal to zero. So then I get cosine three theta is equal to zero, and three theta is equal to, uh, when is cosine zero? Cosine is zero at pi over two, and three pi over two. So that gives me that theta is equal to pi over six, maybe. And uh, pi over two. No, okay, so but when I draw my lines, what I see as I draw these lines is that I have my radial lines are sweeping from pi over 6, which is about right here, to um, like pi over 6, okay? Pi over 2 really is not part of that boundary, so we can say that that is extraneous. It's an extraneous answer, and it really didn't help us in this problem. I know that this petal is symmetrical about the x-axis. So that means that I know that I can use my formula, 1 half, integral from a to b of r squared, so that's going to be 2 cosine 3 theta quantity squared, Now, my boundaries are going to be then, since I know it's pi over 6, so it's going from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. And this will just give me just the one petal. That will give me just the area of just this one petal. If I wanted the area of all three petals, I would take this answer and multiply by 3, because all of the areas are the same. So if I wanted the area of the entire petal, I would multiply this by 3. But I'm just asking for this one area. Now, some of these problems, most of the time, like I said, you can do these with a calculator. But I want to start today by showing you how to do it without a calculator. So we're going to have to do some algebra here. here. <clears throat> 
So one of the things I do want to do is erase what's already here. Sorry, you see my dirty work from earlier today. Let's get rid of that. Okay, sorry about that. There may be some more down here. There is, because this problem is going to take a minute. So you want to make sure you have not a lot of paper to do it when we do it by hand. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I know that when I square this, this becomes 4. Okay, 2 squared is 4. So now I have 1 half. And the other thing that I want to talk about is symmetry. Um, College Board loves symmetry. And integrating from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 can be a little cumbersome. So I'm going to use symmetry here. And I'm going to multiply everything by 2 and then integrate from 0 to pi over 6. And I'm going to write this as 4 cosine squared 3 theta d theta. Um, I hope you understand how I got the 4 because I squared the 2. And I, I'm multiplying it by 2 because essentially I am finding half of this area. So I'm just finding the area of this top portion of that loop. And then multiplying it by 2 because it's symmetrical about the x-axis. Okay? So that gives me 1, but I have to pull out this 4. So that's going to give me 4 because 1 half times 2 is 1, but I'm pulling out that 4. The integral from 0 to pi over 6 to cosine squared theta, 3 theta, d theta. Now, I could, in order to integrate this by hand, I could use integration by parts, but that sounds not like, like it's not fun. So what I can do is I can remember that there is a property that says that um, cosine square theta is equal to, let me see if I can find that property. It's a pre-calc property. I thought I had it written down here. Cosine square theta is equal to 1 half, 1 plus, parenthesis, 1 plus cosine of 2x. Okay? So I'm going to use that property. In this case, my x is 3 theta. Okay? My x is 3 theta. So I'm going to write this as 4, the integral from 0 to pi over 6, 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 6x, or 6 theta. Because here, in this case, my entire thing is 3 theta, so I have to multiply it by 2, so that gives me 6 theta d theta. Once again, I'm going to pull out that 1 half just because I can. I have 2, 0 to pi over 6, and I have 1 plus cosine 6 theta d theta. And now I'm going to integrate that. I'm ready to integrate, finally. So the 2 remains on the outside. And the integral of 1 is theta plus, using chain rule, I get 1 6 sine 6 theta. And I'm integrating this from pi over 2 to 0. So this becomes 2 times pi over 2. Is that pi over 2? Yeah, I keep doing that. I was doing that earlier today. This is pi over 6. I don't know why I keep changing it to pi over 2. This is pi over 6. It's brain fart, sorry. Pi over 6. Okay, so 2 times pi over 6 plus 1 6 the sine of 6 theta times, when, if theta is pi over 6, just becomes 6 becomes pi minus 0 plus 1 6 sine of 0. This is 0, not a theta. Okay? And doing the math on that, I see that. Um, all of this is 0. All of this is 0 because the sign, this becomes 0. That's 0. That's 0. All of this is 0. So my answer is 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. And that's my final answer. So it's not too bad. It's just that we had to remember some pre-calc. And we also have to remember how to take the integral of a function using use substitution. Okay, this one is similar to the one that we just did. Again, we're just finding one petal. And on the one that we did a second ago, if we wanted to find the area of the entire thing, 
when we got pi over 3, we would just multiply pi over 3 times 3. So the, the, the area of the entire region, all three petals would be pi. Okay? So for this one, we're finding one petal of um, r equals 4 sine 2 theta. So once again, what we want to look at is that because it's sine, it's symmetrical to the y-axis, and because it's 2 theta, it, um, n is even, I have twice the number of petals. So I have four petals. But I just want one, um, one petal. It doesn't matter which one I do. I just kind of do it so that it's easier for me. So these are my radial lines. It's sweeping these lines. Okay, and I need to find out what that is. So once again, I'm going to set this, to set this function equal to zero. So I get sine 2 theta is equal to zero. Sine is zero at um, zero and pi. So I get theta is equal to zero and pi over two. Now in this case, both of these, we're going to use both of these. Now you may say, well, that doesn't look like pi over 2. That looks like pi over 4 or something. Um, but again, I am, that doesn't look like, so I could do this a couple of different ways. Um, what I ended up doing was just doing the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 4 sine 2 theta, 1 half. Squared. All this bookkeeping you have to keep up with. So 4 squared is 16. 16 times a half became 8 of sine squared 2 theta. And once again, I'm doing this without a calculator. We are going to do a couple with a calculator, but I'm doing these without a calculator. So the property, the pre-calc property tells me that sine squared theta is equal to 1 half um, 1 minus cosine 2x, 1 minus cosine 2x. So this is going to give me 8, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, and sine squared. So actually what I'm taking is, uh, when I do this, I'm actually finding the area from the polar to this polar. So I'm finding both of these halves, which is going to equal to the whole petal. So I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x. Or, um, actually, it's going to be 4 theta, sorry, because it's already 2. So I have to multiply by 2 again. So 4 theta, d theta. Pulling out uh, 1 half, I get 4 integral from 0 to pi over 2. There's not much I can do. Um, since I'm integrating from 0, that already makes my life easier, so there's not much I could do with that. Um, and then I'm going to do 1 minus cosine 4 theta. And integrating that, I get theta minus 1 fourth sine 4 theta. And I'm integrating that from 0 to pi over 2. So this is 4 times pi over 2 minus 2. Minus, uh, that will become 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, and the sign of 2 pi is 0. And then minus 0 minus 0. So then I just have 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. Now again, that is the area of just one curve. To get the area of the entire curve, I, I mean, to get the area of all four petals, I would multiply this by 4, so the area of all four petals is 8 pi. <clears throat> okay, um, let's do a couple of more and before we go to the next video. So to find the interior of this, again, if you memorize the fact that the domain of this is 2 pi, you could just integrate from 0 to 2 pi. 
But if you don't want to do that, you can set it equal to zero. And that gives us cosine um, theta is equal to negative one. And cosine is equal to negative one at uh, pi. So that's only one value, but I can see that I'm going from pi all the way around. So I'm going from negative pi, so I'm sweeping from negative pi to pi. I'm going from negative pi to pi. So I integrate from negative pi to pi, and it's 2 plus 2 cosine theta squared and times a half. Now, it's a lot of work, and I don't want to work that hard, so I'm just going to use my calculator to do this. So the best way to do this on your calculator is to be in polar mode and radian mode. So make sure your calculator is set to polar mode and radian mode. And then um, when you go to y equals, it gives you r, so you just put this in r1. And then on your calculator, you're going to integrate one half of the integral from negative pi to pi of r1 squared d theta. So you can just put that in your calculator like that, and it should spit out a nice, pretty answer. Um, I think you got it in decimal, but it ends up being 6 pi. You got 18 point something, but if you divide what you have by pi, you can see that it's 6 pi. One last one, we have 2 minus sine theta. So if I did what I did before and set this equal to 0, something weird happens. So I get sine theta is equal to 2. And this um, has no answer because sine theta is never equal to 2. So what do I do for that? Well, that's when I have to remember that the, in, the domain of a Limachon is 2 pi. So then I would integrate from 0 to 2 pi. And I would use my handy-dandy calculator to do that, and I think it came out to 9 pi over 2. Okay? So those are four examples, four of the easier examples. So that's the end of video one. I invite you to come back and watch video two where we get into a little bit more um, difficult problems.